float across the body of water. So when there's a lot of water, it can just smooth sailing, even though underneath the water may be a lot of jagged rocks. So a lot of problems. This is the metaphor for what happens on projects with a lot of money. Okay, so what we've just encountered probably in the last while is that all that might disappear. Now we're in the middle of a lot of problems. A lot of people encounter this and go, hey, this, this sucks, right? So I you know, want the days when we had the cash coming out every orifice. But now, another way to see this is this is an opportunity. So if we're thinking about how to improve ourselves, well, we need to expose those rocks. We need to be able to clear them out. Um, and reducing the amount of money, time, and resources we have is a way to do that. So what's the problem with uh, not seeing problems? Uh, anyone's been through a project and seen this. Everything's cool, all the way through, no problems, no problems. Right at the end, now you're just kind of killed by stuff um, at the end. It's just overflowing, there's just too much stuff to deal with, you can set low from your job. So, <laughs> the reason why you don't hear about problems with the major ones is that um, every time you report something, you get nailed for it, so people learn um, that selection and just stop reporting issues. The other thing is that um, we have to store our information in stuff like spreadsheets, even wikis and stuff, and I call it an information refrigerator, so things just disappear into shared network stuff. Nobody actually looks at this stuff, so it's no good. Um, another way to, to think about it is we want information radiators. So we want uh, forms of information. We want stuff plastered on walls. We want to be talking to people. But we want to push our information out there. It should not be a pull thing. We want to know about stuff. Um, it has to be broadcast. There's another reason why we don't know about problems. That's really how we approach software development. So this is the kind of classic serial waterfall life cycle. Um, that's where you don't know about anything until you run into tests and then you're out of money, so you know, what are you going to do? Uh, another thing to do, uh, another way to approach this is kind of an agile, life cycle is time box. So at any point, we want to find as much problems as we can right at the beginning. Now, this freaks people out because they go, you know, last project I did, nothing was wrong, um, and it all turned out okay, except I transferred to another project before it ended. Um, so we don't want that. Um, it also affects how you build stuff. So let's assume you're building horizontal layers, kind of built per component. You can go through halfway through the project and you can't deliver anything. Nothing actually works. Um, another way to do it is to build on vertical slices. So just going across stuff, you go feature by feature. It means you uh, have to structure teams differently, but it means that at any point, when all of a sudden the cache kind of disappears, no problem, I can still deliver feature one and two, even if feature three doesn't quite make it, I can order it in a way that makes sense. Um, I think we've all, I'm assuming everyone's seen this kind of curve before, this is the exponential defect curve. The longer we wait to detect a problem, the more expensive it gets for various reasons. Also because it gets very uncomfortable to report problems later on, so it gets even more expensive. Um, the way to deal with this is really to see the next stage as your customer and never leak any problems to your customer. So this is kind of a handoff thing. If, I have, if I'm doing development, I'm passing on to a testing group, they're not there to cast my problems. I'm there to not leak anything to them. They're just checking. Uh, this is uh, XP 2002 report. I don't know if everyone here has seen this before, but 60-some uh, percent of features in most products don't even get used. So I'm just thinking, if I pull that out of my project budget, that's pretty good. OK, um, there's a concept called, I know when I see it. Um, right? So everyone says, oh, that's cool. I want this thing. And then later on, when they see it, they say, no, no I want something. That's what they just don't have to describe it. Right? It's not their fault, that's just how it is. Okay, um, another way, so a better way to do it, you just keep showing people stuff. Just show them all the time. Uh, is this what you want? Yes or no? Is this what you want? You have a system that has that built in. Um, by the time you hit the end, you're cool. It's all good. So beyond uh, exposing how this is a, more of a typical problem, is when you have a lot of specialists, you find out that you need a lot of people on your team. Um, and these sort of the places I deal with, you also need a lot of managers to manage the people that you have on the team, and then they need managers as well, so it gets really big. Um, to deal with that, typically we look for cross training, so multi skilled people, the kind of special forces cross trained type people. Um, and then if the teams get smaller, we don't have to spend so much overhead trying to communicate, all that kind of stuff goes away. Um, a final point, so all this stuff is about lean mindset. Um, there's two ways to think about uh, how you deal with stuff. One is authority focus. You think about whose job is this? Is this my problem or is it someone else's problem? If it's not my job, I don't worry about it. It's just not my problem attitude. The lean mindset is 
responsibility focus. You look at it in a situation, what's the right thing to do? How can I help? Um, if a problem shows up, it is not a problem. If problems don't show up, it is a problem. And we work out how to deal with it. Uh, that's all. Thank you.